Okay, good morning. Thanks everyone for coming in the weird weather. I know the, some, we got some guests that traveled from Oakville. Um, our videographer comes from St. Catharines. I come from Brantford, so you come from Hamilton. So days like this are weird, so I appreciate you getting here. We have like 30 people on the live stream, so thanks for waiting, 10 minutes. Um, I'm just gonna wait till it actually, in case you ran to go to the bathroom or coffee. So we're gonna start in 15 seconds. Um, today's training, I got really excited putting it together because I realized that I teach all this stuff, but I've never taught it all as one training. It's all been like little snippets, one-on-one -on -one to people. Hey, what about this line? Try this when you start a call. Hey, here's how we do our qualifying conversation. Um, but to put it all into one thing, I've never really done before because I didn't learn it all as one thing. I've learned it over 10 or 15 years. And those of you that know me know I also hate calling and prospecting. Right? But I learned I had to do it over the years and I'm not a natural at it. So I had to be like systematic at it. And my very first ever coaching call was that I made a reel about it yesterday, but it was like that downward inflection and having kind of your FM DJ voice, right? And then you learn how to mirror and match and then you learn how to qualify property properly. And what happened was it made me a lot better at selling houses because if you have more people at the beginning of the funnel, then you get to pick. So that's what this is all about, is how do we have lots and lots of really high quality conversations with people um, and make it really easy. And what you'll notice, I'm going to hand this out in a minute, but there are very few words on this script, which is the thing. I hated scripts. Now, at first I had to learn them. I remember my coach emailed me a script and he was like, just read this, Jeff, to me on the phone. And he was like, you sound great. You're going to do awesome. Right? And I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't sound like me. And I was like poking back at it. Um, here on the team, we've always had a qualification guide, and you guys know that, that work with it. It's mostly blank. It's just a bunch of boxes to help you know you got all the information, but it doesn't actually tell you what to say because, again, I was like, it's not my style to have a script. So that's why I called this the, wait, the universal non-script, okay? It's not a script. It's actually just a way, a structure, um, but very few actual, I'm not telling you repeat these exact words. Now, you can. I'm gonna show you a bunch of actual sentences today and you can steal them. But the idea is take the concept and the flow of a conversation like this and the tools and then change the words to your voice, right? Um, but the thing that I really learned was I can't just float and expect that I'm gonna just be perfect and impromptu on all these calls. The more I got better at this, the more my income and life improved. Okay, so let's start. We know I've been trying to start these presentations with questions. So if you're on the live stream, just answer these in your head. You don't have to put your hand up. These are just self-coaching questions. Question number one, would you like to get better at having real estate conversations? Okay, a lot of head nodding. That's amazing. So that's why you're here, I hope. Number two, do you know what to say right after hello? Do you have a plan for that? Or do you say what you've been kind of conditioned your whole life? Hey, how you doing? Did I catch you at a good time? You know, what about the weather, right? All this like fake conversation stuff that no one actually cares about and gives you a fake answer back. Or do you have something specific that you've thought of that you say right when you get that hello? We should be excited for the hello, not scared by the way. Okay, number three, do you know how to shift from that into rapport? Does anyone feel like when you call someone they have their backup right away? And they're like, who is this asshole interrupting me? Well, you answer the phone, man. But still at the same time, you feel it, the tension, right? You might feel it, my door knockers, right? You know, they answer and they're like, they're checking you out. They're listening, what is this guy all about? Do I like him or I'm gonna slam the door? It's, you got a very short window. Especially, you know, what do they say on social media? It's like three seconds right now until someone decides to swipe away, right? Um, next, do you know how to properly qualify and discover? I bet a lot of people have yes to this. If you're out there making money, you probably know how to do this part of the conversation. So we're gonna go over it quick. Um, but just remember it's in there. We go, hello, we get into rapport, then we do what we wanna do, which is this, and then we move on to the last step, which is getting past objections and roadblocks. You ever have a conversation where the guy just throws up something like, well, but this, but interest rates, but my house isn't ready, but I don't even know you. Okay, but let's keep going, right? And get to the end of the conversation. And then of course, we gotta finish it somewhere. Okay. I guess we're done talking here, right? <laughs> what do you think? There's a lot of uh, different ways we can end a conversation, but if you have a really strategic way, you can usually get what you want. So that's the big crescendo. Make sense? Everybody want to do this today? Okay, amazing. So we have some goals and I'm going to get some audience, audience participation here. So we think we're making an outbound sales call. And for the point today, let's not have it be cold. 
Let's have it be warm. So somebody inquired. They could have inquired about a property. Someone on your team sent you a lead. Maybe they registered on your website. Maybe they came to your open house on Sunday. They, they've got some context. This isn't just door knocking or cold calling. But what, so now we're calling them back. What are the goals? No wrong answers. Jamie. Find their timeline motivation, if they're pre-approved or not. Okay, so I'm gonna repeat your answers because I'm the only one on a mic. So timeline motivation, you're basically talking about the qualifying process. Figure out their needs, wants, whether I wanna work with them. Awesome, okay. Hint, I gave you a lot of the goals already in the questions. What? Book an appointment. Close, yeah, get out there, go belly to belly. That's the ultimate goal, right? Or decide if you want to and then go for it. You might decide, hey, they're not ready for, for me to go face to face yet. What else, what other goals when you call someone? Anyone got any unique goals when they call? Just to like have a conversation with them? Yeah, initial, op op break the ice, open the door, make the next conversation easier. You know, introduce yourself, have a voice to voice and upgrade it from text. I love that. Very simple goal, right? Different than book the appointment. What else? Anything else? Right, so be memorable, like be remembered, you know, have a deeper relationship at the end of the call than you did at the beginning. These are all great answers, by the way, thanks. Um, I'll show you what I wrote down. Goal number one, get past hello. Okay. Goal number two, build rapport quickly. Goal number three, understand their goals and needs, qualify them properly. Goal number four, understand any of their roadblocks or their pain points. That's where we actually serve people, right? Show them that I have the answers to their questions and I can help them. So they, now they wanna work with me and then close for the next step, right? So this is a call. But this doesn't just happen through chit chat, is what I learned. Maybe it does if you guys are awesome, you've been in sales your whole life, I don't know, someone else trained you, it's all subconscious. For me, none of this happened unless I really focused on it and trained myself up on it. So, this is the structure of this call. I'm gonna hand these sheets out. If you're watching on the webinar, this came to you as a PDF in both the uh, preview calls. So go back to that email, click and download this to follow along. I like to give things little names to make them easy to remember. If you only remember this in the gray box, so the gray box is the same as my slide here. If you only remember this, this will help you because you can remember the flow of a call. And then as you see, I've got the same headings here to give us some context. And we're gonna go through this stuff very quickly. What do I, I, got, I only took up six minutes so far, so that's good. When I was typing this up, I thought to myself, this could be a full on two day, eight hour a day training if I really broke it down and went into every section and pulled up references and other trainers and we practiced and all this. So to go over this in 30 minutes or less is gonna be a lightning fast pace, right? So this is just a very high level overview, but that's the design of this. You can dive into every one of these sections with a lot of psychology, um, you know, all the backstory behind it, all that stuff to figure out why. And I'm gonna, just gonna give you a little taste. But this is the basic structure. We're gonna start with the hello, right? A very purposeful hello. We're gonna move to our opener, which is designed to get us into rapport really quickly and get them talking. Then we're gonna control the bulk of the conversation through the discovery process. I'm gonna use a little fun tool we call the magic wand to get over any roadblocks or objections. Then we're gonna summarize up the call Anyone who follows Chris Voss, the master negotiator, we're gonna get a, that's right, you understand me? And then in that moment, we're gonna shift from a thoughtful listener to the powerful consultant we are, and we are gonna go to the next step, whatever we say it is. It's a nice little structure. If you learn to do this on the phone, it's a lot easier because you can have your scripts and your stuff in front of you, you can have your computer open, but this translates to the door, to the open house, to the listing table, to at the house with the buyer when you're doing viewings. The conversation's the same, right? You don't have to do this over the phone. Sometimes you can do this if you run out to a sign call. You can be doing this conversation as you're walking around a house when you get good at it. But this is the structure. So let's start with the hello. So the goal here is to get to the point quickly. Why? Well. What do you think when someone calls you and you actually answer it in 2023? Right away, you're like, what does this person want from me? Get to the point, right? Even if they're DMing you on social now, like, hey, I like your stuff. What do you, and you're like, come on. Are you trying to sell me something? What are you trying to do here, right? So the point here is a very simple structure of a script is, right? Why are you calling me? Where are you from? And what's the reason of this call? We gotta get those three things out in a single sentence before anything else. If you ask someone how you doing, all they're going is fine, 
Get going. Why are you calling me, right? They're, not t they're never gonna tell you how they're actually doing, by the way. Do you ever tell anyone how you're actually doing? I read a whole book about this right now. The entire world goes, good, fine, okay, that's it. Yeah, some bullshit answer that you say to everybody, right? I say fantastic to everybody, right? Because I, you know, but you're gonna get someone's canned response if you ask them a canned question. You guys ever go to the mall anymore and you walk into a store and they go, okay, can I help you? What are you, and just looking, bullshit. You stay home if you're just looking, right? You're here to buy something, but that's your automatic response to the automatic question. So skip it, right? What we're gonna do instead, and I'm gonna slow down here too, is in a very, don't rush this line because they're listening, but if you blah, 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 you've missed it. We've got to say in a very clear way. Hi, it's Jeff calling from the crew. I noticed you registered on my website and I'm calling you back. Who you are, where you're from, why you're calling me. In one sentence, right? Now their ears are open. So we say it nice and slow so they can hear it. Oh, one thing here too is skip the, um, hey, is this Josh? It's 2023, everyone's got their own phone, all right? <laughs> you're not calling a house anymore. So it's Josh. If they gave you Josh's phone number and said it's Josh, it's Josh's phone. He's not putting his wife's phone in your thing. So as long as you get the same gender <laughs> when you call, just skip the whole, do I have, hey, is this Jen? No, just assume it's Jen. Because if it's not, she'll interrupt you and tell you, hey, this isn't. And then you can, oh, I got the wrong number. Let me verify. But we can skip over all of that. Now, the killer part, and I'm, I have some examples here in a second. But this is, this is the one we had to learn. And... It's gonna sound, if you remember nothing, start with this, right, from this presentation. After you explain who you are, where you're from, and why you're calling, just say thank you and zip it. You're gonna short circuit their brain. In marketing, we call this a pattern interrupt, okay? First of all, it's a pleasantry to be thanked. They're gonna, oh, interesting, right? They're gonna be, why are they thanking me? What did I do to receive this praise, right? And also, it's gonna, the pause is gonna have them wanna talk back to you. We learned this specifically from a sales trainer, and once I started using it, all kinds of doors opened up for me, right? It's gonna, it's gonna totally shift the conversation. So, for example, come on. Uh, this would be if someone just signed up on our website to search all homes, right? Hey, Thomas, it's Jeff calling from the crew. We run the website that you just signed up for yesterday. I just wanted to call and say thank you, oh, right? Believe me. This works like a dream. You're, some people are looking at me like, they can't be that easy. But start with the thank you, right? You go to someone's house for a listing presentation, I used to start with the same line too, right? Hey, I know it's a big decision you're making. You have me out to your house to talk about this thing. I just wanted to say thank you, right? And remember, when you decide to zip it in sales, you gotta hang on to that moment. It's gonna feel like a long time of silence. Let the other person break the silence. So you're gonna get potentially a couple answers to this to my people who actually do this, what's someone gonna say to you after you say thank you to them? No problem. No, yeah, some type of you're welcome. No problem, okay, right? Thank you, you're welcome, or, or what else might you get? They're gonna be like, what? Huh. <laughs> Either way, it doesn't matter. We just keep moving, right? <laughs> if they're really confused, or you said this line too fast, what do you do? Repeat. You just start right from this, just reread it. They go, huh, who are you? It's Jeff calling from the crew, the website. Now they're listening, right? The website, I'm just calling to say thank you. Okay. They're like, now what? Do you hear how it could, their whole brain is tuned in to listen to you now after you've opened with a line like this. Sometimes they just start spewing. Right, you might oh, get. I absolutely signed up. Yeah, how much did it sell for? When's the open house? This might be the opener. You might not even need the next section, 100%, right? If you get a talkative person, but the point of this is it's a pattern interrupt. It's different than every other person that's calling them and probably every other real estate agent that's calling them. Who you are, where you're from, why you're calling, thank you, shut up. Can we move on to the next section? Did everyone get that part? Okay, this is good stuff. It's taken me 15 years to pull all this stuff together. Um, just a couple more examples. So this would be a sign call, right? So they, they registered, they left you a voicemail or one of your team members just forwarded you a lead. I think I have that one next, but hey Claire, it's Jeff calling from the crew. I received a message. You were looking for information on our listing at 123 Main Street. I just wanted to call and say thank you. <laughs> right? You're gonna go, oh wow, this is the nicest callback I've ever received, right? Uh, yeah, how can I help? You want, how much is that? 399, click. That's not what you want from a sign call, right? We wanna have a conversation. Remember, you got them. They want something from you. You leave that till the end. We're gonna talk for a minute. I think I got one more here. 
Oh, this one. We do a lot of like contests and charity events here. Hey, Joe, it's Jeff calling from the crew. I noticed you entered our contest to win Raptor tickets. Just want to call and say thanks. By the way, you're not the winner yet. We haven't drawn it. <laughs> I'm just saying thanks. Right? They get really excited when they see your phone number after they entered a contest. Okay. So this can be reapplied. I gave you the framework here and you can just twist it into any type of lead you're calling back. This is for warm though. If you're cold calling, you're gonna have to just slightly tweak it because they didn't really ask for the callback. Okay. Next section is the opener. Now I have two here. We've been teaching one of them, but I'll give you my other one first because it's even easier. You can memorize this line and I, I've been using this my entire career. So now they say, you're welcome, okay. And then immediately I go to this line. So you're thinking of moving. <laughs> you gotta say it like that, downward, right? Don't, you're thinking of moving? They're gonna be like, no, I'm not. You're like, okay, I'm screwed. Where do I go from here, right? You say, I'm thinking of moving and they have to agree or disagree with that or start telling you about it. So that's one, that's option one. That's the really simple one. The second one, which I've been teaching here to some of you guys into our ISA is a little slightly different one, which is I'd like to understand your situation, right? And this one is a little magic word. People want their situation understood. And for whatever reason in like NLP, neuro linguistic programming, this word gets a response, situation, right? You gotta say it, enunciate, enunciate it. So there's two ways we can either just go right into, so you're thinking of moving. Well, now they have to tell you, yes, I am. That makes sense. I registered for information on a house. I am thinking of moving or they got to tell you why not. Oh, I was just there for my daughter. Um, I was just poking around your website. Either way you're talking, right? We don't objection handle anything here. We just keep going. But now we're having a conversation, right? We introduced ourselves. We thanked them. Now we're into the conversation. So a couple examples here. So after the thank you, right? The pause, whatever they said, then it's like, hey, well, I've been assigned to your account to make sure we're sending you the right properties, but really, I'd like to just better understand your situation. Anyone say any, anyone who hasn't been trained personally by me say anything like this? It's a little different, right? We're saying, hey, we're gonna get to your stuff in a minute. I, I acknowledge it, but really I wanna get to know you. Um, anyone who's ever had a like recruiting conversation with me knows I'm like, hey, before we get into it, I really, we talked about this the other day. I'd like to hear your origin story. Let's go back to the beginning. I, want, I need to know about you before we get to any of these questions, right? And so that's what you're having the person open up. Hey, I'm a friend. I'm gonna listen to you. I need to understand your stuff before I can even answer any of these questions. I'm not just here to tick a bunch of boxes. It is literally a magic word. People will tell you their oh, yeah. story. They'll tell you everything. And, and again, it's situation, zip it. You gotta, right? And then they'll go, what? Like, your situation, just say it again, right? But you can't, you can't get tense in the, in the void. So these are my two, right? So tell me about your situation or so you're thinking of moving. Uh, the sign call, right? That you say thank you, you pause, then you say, hey, I'm gonna be able to get you all the information you need on that property. I can even book you a viewing, but really, I'd like to just better understand your situation. Again, I'm gonna get to your stuff, but let's talk, right? Let's slow down. Believe me, in 2023, people are having less conversations than ever. If you make someone comfortable and use one of these openers, they will, blah, all kinds of stuff that you used to feel like you had to like pry out of people, right? People wanna talk to someone who seems like they're listening, right? Instead of just, I'm just gonna give you this script and try to qualify you and get you into your, you know, the next part of the call, which we're gonna get to. So now they're starting to talk, right? And this is where the call changes, our tactics change. I've given you two styles here. One we've, most of us have probably heard of. You ever heard of LP Mama? It's like the classic, right? I took the last A off of Mama because the last A stands for appointment. We move that down here. So it's just LP Mom, right? But we, we need to find out like Mr. LaRouche was telling us, their location, their price, their motivation, are they working with an agent? Have they gotten a mortgage? Or I put in the middle column, a much simpler structure. We're just gonna go after the five W's, right? What and where are you buying? What and where are you selling? Why are you doing that? this? When do you wanna make this happen? Who else is involved, right? So you come up with your own structures. I have these all on a notepad with big empty boxes, just so you can have a conversation in any direction possible, 
But then with a glance of your eyes, you can see, oh, what haven't I asked yet? It's not about going one quite, it's not a survey, right? You wanna just have an open conversation. So yeah, the, the discovery is to learn as much info as you can about them because until you know about them, how can you provide a unique solution to their pain points, right? Before that, you're just a question answerer. You're just the person who has the date of the open house or the price of this listing or how many bedrooms. Once I know about them, I can solve all kinds of problems for them, custom. And I happen to specialize in exactly your problem, right? Once I know it, right? But before I know it, I could be pitching the wrong thing. I could be talking about something over here and you don't even care about it until I discover it. Now, the next little section of this is important because I spent 10 years in the market research industry before getting a real estate license. So we had a small call center in Guelph, Ontario. We employed students. I was a student myself when I started there. I actually started in the call center calling people and doing surveys. And then I moved into the IT department and up and up and up to eventually being like the second in charge of that company. The interesting thing, there's two types of data. There's quantitative data and qualitative data. A little pop quiz, anyone know what those words mean? Yeah, and qualitative is, it's talking, right? It's like sentences. So how do you feel on a scale of one to 10 today? Nine. Yeah, you're like, fantastic, 10, right, Josh? Yeah, of course. Um, that question on its own is okay, but only okay if I ask hundreds of people and get averages and see where you deviate. It really means nothing to one person because I don't really know what 10 means to you or do you always feel like 10, right? So you, your nine might mean you're having a bad day, Josh, right? <laughs> so. That qu quantitative information is kind of useless. We don't really ask a lot of it, right? Qualitative information, I can say, okay, well, tell me more. Why did you, why did you answer nine? I'm at Apex. You're at Apex, okay. Now I'll tell you, that's a great first answer, but it doesn't get me anywhere. So this is the next skill we need and we used to teach and hammer at the market research company because we used to always ask a number, then why, but the why box is this big on the survey. It's not this big. And we had to train our call center agents to this, have this next skill, which it's gonna sound weird, but there's no other way to say it. It's probing, right? It's to actually figure out why you said what you said, not what you said. So why does coming to Apex make you happy, right? Now we'll start getting into some stuff, right? So there's kind of two techniques to do this, and I put them both here for you. Uh, let me just see. Okay, we'll go back, we'll get to that in a second. So there's two techniques, I put them on the right side. The first one is so basic, it seems like it's not gonna work, but it is another little magic tool, the mirror and match. So if you're listening to someone speak and you want them to keep speaking, when they pause, you just have to repeat the last one to three words of the, the last thing they said. Go try this at home, I promise you, it's amazing. You're gonna feel weird because you know you're doing it. What the other person hears is, oh, they heard me and they want me to keep going. I don't know, we gotta role play this. Say, say something to me, Josh. Tell me about why you like coming to Apex. I really like that it helps me become a better salesperson. Oh, a better salesperson. Yeah. You can use the stuff? Yeah. In every conversation I have with every person that I meet. With everyone you meet? Everyone. See, it says, I heard what you said, keep going. I'm interested. It's like lean in. It's this type of like, I'm in. And it's so easy. You don't have to be thinking about anything. You can be taking notes and you hear them pause and you just go, up, 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 right? One to three words. It's usually the last three, but it could be like the little key thought. But what it's not is me jumping in and dominating the conversation again. So this one's super easy. The mirror and match just says, I got you, keep going. Keep going, buddy, keep talking. Yeah, I love this, keep it going. So that's the one, and that's the most recent one I learned. The most recent one? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Don't do it to the host. Uh, I mean, do this to your spouse and you will f they will feel loved. I do this to my kids all the time, right? It's crazy, I hang out with a lot of real estate agents, I have to tell them to stop doing this. Cause like, it gets annoying. You're like, Carrie, would you knock it off, all right? We're just here as real people. Stop mirroring and matching me, right? Because it's so ingrained if you've been doing it for so many years. The next one is similar, but a different approach in case you don't want to be so robotic, right? It's the affirm and then probe, right? So you, whatever they say, you come back with a positive word. That's awesome. Tell me more. Great, why is that important to you, right? 
cool, I love that city too, tell me more, right? So we affirm and then we dig. If you don't affirm, the dig kind of sounds like a dig, right? But if you affirm and then dig. Side note, I don't have this in here, try to stay away from why. Why is a very defensive reactionary question. All the other questions are cool, but why makes me, it's a judgmental type question. So if we can stay away from the word why and use other things like tell me more, that's interesting. Oh, you're gonna say, uh, oh, you wanna move to Brantford, why Brantford? And then the person's like, whoa, what the hell? Oh, I gotta tell you why Brantford, right? Aren't you the real estate agent? So why can be a weird word, but the rest of them are like magic. Is stuff making sense? Amazing. Okay. Some of my uh, trainees will know this. We think we need to learn how to talk. We, we actually have to do is learn how to listen and then ask the next question, right? Whoever's asking the questions, not whoever's talking the most, but whoever's asking the questions is in charge of the conversation. So it doesn't matter what someone says, don't, try, don't get pulled in to their questions, right? Sure, you wanna answer it, but if you find yourself, you're in the reactionary, they're asking all the questions and you're, what's the price of that house? 399. How many bedrooms does it have? Three. They're in charge of the conversation and you're being pulled along, right? You gotta flip it back and you ask a question, right? And let them answer and talk as long as they want and then ask your next question, ask your next question. It's, that's the person who's in charge of the conversation, right? And we play this game sometimes. Uh, we don't have time to play it here today. Maybe we will in the follow-up session. But the question game, where we go around the circle, some of you have played this with me before, and you ask a question to somebody else, you have to answer it with a comma and immediately ask another question. If you pause or you only answer the question, you, you're out of the game, right? And you can try this one at home too. You can play it, volley it back and forth. Try to always answer, comma, question without a pause. If you pause, they're gonna fire another question at you, right? So whoever's asking the questions and then listening is in control of the conversation and you wanna be in, in control of the conversation. So I'll just skip through these. We've got this stuff on our slide deck. I'm not really keeping up with my slides here. I got my worksheet, that's why. Okay, now we're getting to, I've got a lot of information now. And a few things are gonna pop up when you're talking to them. They're gonna tell you why not, right? Because we all want the person to move when? Jamie? Yeah, yeah t t this, tonight, I can come out to your house, let's go buy a house tonight. But we know a lot of people we talk to, for whatever reason, they're gonna throw a bunch of speed bumps and objections in your way. Well, during the discovery phase, I recommend don't handle them there. Just note them, right? And we keep talking, because if we get down an objection hole, you're gonna to start to sound really salesy, and you're probably not gonna solve that objection over the phone, right? It might need another step. We might have to do something. They might have to do something. So we don't wanna go down the objection handling hole in real time. This is one of the things I think is really off with a lot of sales training, is they think that if you just have this magic line, it's gonna somehow change someone's mind, right? Instead, we wanna go deep in the discovery. We almost just say they've come up Oh, well, I haven't even been pre-approved for a mortgage. Oh, you haven't? No problem. Next, right? Next. And so we just keep talking. But the magic wand is a magical little thing that actually helps us move past objections that you can't solve on the phone call today and keep talking, all right? I call it, it's, a, like, it's like almost a hypothetical close, we'll call it. So it's, uh, if I could wave a magic wand, you gotta say those words, and remove your objection. I'm not saying I can. This is why it's fun. It's just saying, hey, if I could just wave a magic wand and get you pre-approved for mortgage, then would there anything been stopping us from working together? So we just move past it. We don't try to even solve it yet. We just acknowledge, yeah, that's an issue, but if I could, Ryan's not, I wave the magic wand on Ryan every day. I'm like, Ryan, if I could just wave a magic wand and fix that for you, then can we plan this? Okay, I use this stuff too. So, here's a couple examples because it's better to kind of see it in, in, uh, in action. If I could wave a magic wand and find you that perfect home today, would there be anything stopping you from making an offer? Now you're gonna get the real objection, not the baby one. Oh yeah, but we, have, we don't have our deposit, we have to pull it out of RSPs, you're gonna get the real challenge. You wave the magic wand on the small thing and you get the real thing, does that make sense? If I could, Wave a magic wand and get you an offer for $900,000 on your home. Would there be anything stopping you from putting it up on the market? I think I've heard you say this one. <laughs> That's a powerful one at the door. 
if I could wave a magic wand and get you pre-approved for that mortgage, would you be ready to start shopping? Now the thing, you, if anyone's catching up, what is the magic wand signaling to the other person? That you can do this for them. You can help them. You have the magic wand, right? I want the guy with the magic wand. This is amazing. You can solve all my problems that easily? Well, maybe not all on the phone call, but I can get to work on it, right? So just to recap, we've gotten through the hello really quickly. We've opened the conversation in a nice way where they're pleasant. We've gone through a ton of questions and listening and probing and we're writing all this stuff down. We're not objection handling yet. If there's anything slowing the conversation down, we just wave a magic wand over it and keep going, right? And we're writing all this stuff down. Now this is where things change. This is where we become a pro salesperson in this moment. You've gotten all the information you need and you're deciding, this is the key, you're deciding what I wanna do with this person. I want to put them in the incubator. I want to get them pre-approved and then call them back. I want to go to their house this week. You pick. If we're waiting for the client to suggest the appointment, it's gonna be a long wait, right? So we're, the whole qualifying conversation, we're deciding what do I want the next step to be? And here's how we make it happen. We move on to the summary. So the summary comes from the world's greatest negotiator. If you don't have his book, Never Split the Difference, you should get it. It's, uh, he's a former director of the FBI. Uh, not to go too deep into his history, but he was around when Ruby Hill and Waco went bad. And then he was part of the new team that changed the entire way they negotiate with people. From day one, all brand new psychology, all brand new playbook. And he ran that department for years, got out of the FBI, became a private consultant. And it's rare you find someone that has a skill that is so far beyond everybody else but if you read this book, you will have a whole holster of techniques that the average salesperson does not have. And this stuff works in qualifying calls, but it also works with other agents. It works with your spouse and your kids. It's all incredible stuff in there. So I would suggest that book, but this comes from listening to hostages. What we wanna do is we gotta confirm we've heard them. They have nothing else to tell us, right? So you can switch to the summary with something like this. Hey. Josh, we've been talking for a few minutes here. Let me see if I've got this all. We introduce, hey, I'm gonna summarize this up. And I've been taking good notes. Let me give you an example. Okay, Andrea, we've been talking for a minute here. Let me see if I got all this. You wanna move into the North End to get your kids into a better school district. You need a three to four bedroom home. A pool would be a bonus, but it's not a deal killer. We need to get your home sold for at least 700K and you'd like to have this all done by August. Did I get it? All right. Now, if you got it, thanks Ryan, what are they gonna say to you? That's right. They're gonna affirm it. They're gonna say that's right in the ideal sense, that's the killer one, or they're gonna go, yeah. But what their psychology is saying is, oh my God, <laughs> this person knows me inside and out in five minutes, this is crazy. I've never had anyone care about me this much. The other thing they could say is, if you didn't get it. Yeah, they're gonna go, oh no, 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 we, you didn't, we, we didn't talk about my dog needs a fence, right? So it's another trial close, right? Just like the magic wand is a trial close, it's the hypothetical. If I wave the magic wand, are you ready? This is another trial close, right? So it's another test to see if they're ready for you to go for the appointment. Because if they say that's right, then we're good. You got them and you know how to solve their problems. If not, they're gonna tell you. And then guess what you do? Okay, great. So <laughs> if we do, 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 and we get you a fence, then we're ready to go. Yeah, that's right. Okay, now the call's over. Make sense? We've got everything we need to know in this call. So the summary is a magical thing. They're gonna say, that's right. They're gonna say, you got it. They're gonna say, exactly. And then you're gonna move on. And if they don't, you're just gonna loop through. Oh man, I can't believe we didn't talk about your little puppy dog, right? So the close is now the grand finale. And this is important. The moment you get the summary affirmation, you get to switch from this gentle, listening, caring person to a powerful consultant that knows exactly what to do. This is when we turn our alpha gene on and we take over, right? For the, the whole conversation up until here, it's been filled very relaxed. Oh wow, they're listening to me, they're asking me all these questions, they're not trying to control the conversation, it's just floating around, they're saying nice things to me, I'm talking, I'm talking. Then you get the that's right, and now we're gonna switch to, boom, I'm in charge, I know exactly what to do, here we go, right? And that's gonna stay for the entire client relationship if you do it right from the, from the beginning. Has anyone ever been pulled around by a client? And like once you get into the beta 
like you're, you're not the alpha in the client realtor relationship, it's a long relationship, right? They're telling you what to do for your entire relationship. And it's hard to get it back. You're, so, you're like, yeah, I've been there once or twice, I don't like it. <laughs> okay, so magically, you happen to specialize in exactly what they need. And this isn't some sales trick. You specialize in helping people get to their goals through real estate, right? So, but they don't need everything you do. They need you to do what they need. So once you did the summary, it's like, great. That's amazing. I happen to specialize in helping people upgrade from their home and make sure they get into the North End before August. That's what I do, right? I help people become first time home buyers. I help investors get into their new multifamily homes. I do exactly what you need. Based on everything you told me our next step is, as clear as day, as sharp as you can say it. They just told you, you got me. And I say, great, I heard it all. And based on everything you just said, our next step is blank, whatever you want it to be. We get together tonight, I buy you a coffee and we go through this. I come out to your house and give you a free home evaluation. I send in the stagers, whatever you've decided. You tell them, I heard everything you said. Now I'm the pro, this is what we do. This make sense? Okay. It's like science, Jack. It's a little bit like science. Yes. Am I making it sound too easy? But it is, right? But you have to actually do it, not think I'm just really good on my toes, <laughs> right? We practice this stuff. And the way you practice it is by having the conversation with intention. It's not always gonna go perfect, but then you leave the conversation, you go, oh man, I never did the, the opener. That's why it was so awkward at the beginning. Ah, I never really did the summary. And that's why I couldn't close properly. Or, you know, I pitched that too early. And you, you end your conversation and you think through them. How can I make that one better? The best way you can do it is like my man Riley back here is just multiple revolutions, right? Like making 2,000, 3,000 phone calls in a month <laughs> up there in, in the upper office. So you have to make a commitment to actually practice this. But if you remember this, the structure, because you can take the structure and make it your own. So to summarize up, we start with the hello, right? Skip all the niceties, skip who is this? Are you having a nice day? Did I catch you at a good time? They'll interrupt you and tell you all that stuff if, you if it's not. Instead, we just get in right to, who are you? Why are you calling me? Thank you, right? You can add where you're from if you want. Then we're gonna use one of many techniques to start the call really nice. Let them know you got the information they need, but you wanna understand them, right? So you're thinking of moving, tell me about your situation. I just really wanna understand you, right? Your own words, you can take mine or you can make up your own, but that's how we get the, the discovery part open then we ask all these questions, right? Would you just get to the point, James? No, no, I need to know all this stuff, right? I've got your information. I, I, I can book that showing for you, but I really need to understand more about you. Then we're gonna wave a magic wand to move past any small objections, speed bumps, roadblocks, especially ones that aren't in your power to solve. Like, oh, I really gotta talk to my husband. Well, if I could wave a magic wand and your husband would agree to all this, then could I come over and list your house, right? And they'll go, yeah, I guess if he agrees to it, great. Let's move on then, right? Then we're gonna summarize up everything we heard and listen for the positive affirmation that that's right, you got it, you understand me. And then we switch into consultant mode and tell them exactly where we gotta go next. That's the conversation. Like I said, we could have slowed this down and practice every single section and have 10, 15 examples. This could take two days to train it. I've seen other people take an entire day at a seminar to train this. But if you take it and work on it for years, like I have, it becomes very, very natural. Okay, thank you very much for joining me today. We'll take the rocket ship to the apex. Um, next week, little preview. We're gonna be talking about how to use short form video today. Um, I love if you are here next week too. You're doing, you're killing it on short form video. Um, we're gonna be talking, Jen's been killing it, Josh is killing it. I've been trying really hard for the last month. Um, it is the medium today and I actually, uh, before I wrap this up, I was listening to Mr. Beast on Lex Friedman podcast. And it's at about like two hours in, he said something. I was actually up on a stair climber in the gym and I had to stop and I got my feet off and I went reverse. And he said, for the first time in the history of social media, you can make one piece of content that applies to every single platform. Every platform out there has gone all in on short form minute or less video. You can make one video and post it to Facebook, to Instagram, to YouTube, to Twitter, to LinkedIn, and where else even? I forget, there was like one more. TikTok, yeah, and it goes. And every platform is asking for the same piece of content. This is the first time. I've been playing the social media game since like it was Facebook was only for those of us still at college, right? And this is the first time you can make one piece of content 
and then post it in five places and it could pop on any one of them. And it's also the first time in history where you have different audiences on every different platform. Five or six years ago, it was kind of rude to post the same thing on Facebook and Instagram because you had the same 50 friends on both platforms, right? They'd be like, why are you double posting? Or I just saw that in your story. Why is it in your feed? You got different people in all these areas. So we're gonna share with our own experiences. I'll be sharing mine if you've been watching my content. I've been doing a mix of professional stuff, personal stuff, just pictures, swipeable carousels. I've been throwing everything at my social media for the last month to prepare for this meeting, right? But we also have some people that are in this room right now that have been killing it and putting a big effort in. And this is a really easy way to get yourself out there in 2023 without even having to leave the couch, right? And you don't have to sing and dance and point at things on the screen. You don't even have to be on the video if you don't wanna be, right? There's lots of ways to do this type of content. So we're gonna talk about that. So join me next week. Thank you for joining me today. We can kill the video and we're gonna stick around for a mastermind session on this topic. Thanks everyone.